Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. Feathers. What can I sell you today? Perhaps a, uh, a bomb or uh, maybe something in a rocket, perhaps. What is all this, a schemer? Uh, absolutely safe fireworks. What does that mean? Oh, yes. Well, I'm uh, <clears throat> glad that you uh, asked that, Billy. Um, yes, uh, nephew Sam, could you do me a favor, perhaps, and uh, go somewhere else and uh, make some money or something like that, please? Mm -hmm. That's it. Bye-bye mm, now. Yes, well, uh... <clears throat> The reason that they are absolutely safe is because, uh, well, they don't work. <laughs> There's nothing in these things. Zero zilch. So where did you get these, Schemer? Well, I picked them up at the cut rate discount surplus garbage outlet. <laughs> well, I do believe that uh, you got cheated this time because uh, this one is loaded. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Hi, Mayor Flopdinger. Want to have your picture taken with Uncle Sam? It's only 25 cents for one, a dollar for two. Hmm? But, but are you old enough to vote? No, sir. No. Well, then, no time. No time right now. Forever. No. Go away. Come see me again when you're old enough to vote. <laughs> oh, you! You, Miss Jones, you! <laughs> Hello there, Mayor Flopdinger. Are you having a good Fourth of July? No. No. That's easier said than done. I have to give a patriotic speech tonight. Look. Oh, sir, I would think it would be easy to give a speech about the Fourth of July. You do? Oh, why, sure. You can talk about the Bill of Rights or, or the Revolution. Or how about democracy? You know, about the government, how it's of the people, for the people, by the people. Oh, oh. Oh, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Do you have a pencil? Oh, sure. Hmm? Yes, and something to write on. Maybe the back of an envelope. Okay. Fine, fine. Now, now let's get this straight. Now, you don't mind if I use this and quote you, do you? Oh, well, sir, <laughs> actually, uh, Your Honor, it's, it's President Lincoln's. Oh, that, uh-huh. Well, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, you better keep this pencil. It's bound to be very valuable if this is President Lincoln's pencil. Oh, no, sir. No, no, no. The words of the people, for the people, oh. by the people. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, well, keep it anyway. Yes, I've just had an idea. An idea I've been wanting to have ever since I came in here. Now, as long as you were the person that owned a pencil that belonged to Lincoln, you should be the one to make the patriotic speech, Miss Jones. Oh, no, sir, I can't. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, please, I... please don't thank me. Now, I really have to go. You know, I have to write an introduction for you for your patriotic speech. Yes, oh, I sir. do. Yes. Bye -bye. Oh, oh, right. oh, there's the 4th of July special. Right on time. Yeah. But, Mayor, oh, dear. What can I say about the 4th of July? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, hmm. Hey, amigos, a happy 4th of July to all of you. The 4th of July brings a tear to my eye. Oh, Tito, what exactly does independence mean to you? Hmm, let me think. I guess it means freedom, you know, like being my own boss, pulling my own strings, playing my own tunes, my own way. <laughs> pulling your own strings? Now that is something I would love to see. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. <laughs> Hi, Dan. We're practicing for the three-legged race. Oh, wow, a rabbit. Whose is it? Is it yours? It's Billy's, I guess. I mean, it's his trap. I helped him set it behind the station. I wonder what he's going to do with it. 
Well, knowing Billy, he'll probably let it go and give the rabbit its freedom. It's a good day for freedom. Hi, Mr. Conductor. Hi, kids. Happy Fourth of July. Where have you been, Mr. Conductor? I've been in New York, visiting a lady friend. A beautiful French lady friend. Really? From France? What's her name, Mr. Conductor? The Statue of Liberty, of course. I drop in on her every Fourth of July to keep her company. She gets lonely all by herself up there in the middle of the harbor. But she's not French. She is so. The French people gave her to America. We learned that in school, remember? We did? Oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> Say cheese! Gee, man. Why do you do stuff like that? I mean, you scared the poor little rabbit. Yeah. Hey, don't you want to see your picture? 25 cents for one, two for a dollar. <sighs> Boy, look at those faces. Looks like four scared rabbits. Hey, what's that? Dust! The vegetables from my garden, eh? You're a pretty hungry little nephew, aren't you? What are you going to do with them, Billy? Can we keep them as our pet? Mm, no. No, I don't think my little nephew would be very happy as a pet. I'm going to take him into the woods and let him go. Why do you call him nephew? Hmm. Well, the people that are known as the Winnebago, they believe that us humans are aunts and uncles to this particular little animal. And they have in their stories, they believe that this little guy is a, a very important animal spirit. And he's a very brave hero and a, a clever little trickster. They even have a story about why his tail is so short. You want to hear it? Yes, yeah, sure, sure does. Well, a long time ago, there was this hare living in the forest. Now, a hare is a very large, large rabbit. And he came across this path and he decided, well, I want to capture whatever it is or whoever it is that makes this path. So he made himself a trap and he made it out of thistle. And it sort of worked, caught something, but whatever it was, it got away. It wasn't strong enough. So he made another trap and he made it out of bark and string. Same thing, still wasn't strong enough. So he went to his grandmother and he said, Grandmother, I said, can I have one of your braids? I want to have something to make a rope out of, make a stronger trap, and sure enough, it worked. You know what he caught? Cut the sun. Well, you can't keep the sun. Mm -mm. So he went, got close to the trap, and let the sun go. But he got so close that he singed the hair on his tail. And that's why, to this day, this little nephew of mine has a short tail. And you let the sun go free, my little nephew, and I'm going to let you go free. Yeah. <sighs> what is it, blight of my life? Oh, Schemer, look what I found. It's gold. Oh, sure, you find gold. <clears throat> Holy nickels, it is gold! Then a little pile of it over there. And if there was a little pile of it over there... That means that there is a big pile of it around here somewhere. Exacto mundo! That's right, Nicodo Fish. Listen to me. This is what you and I are going to do tonight. When everyone else is listening to those speeches and stuff at the park, you and I are going to come in here, turn this place upside down, and find that, and you and I are going to be rich! Shh, quiet! Shh, quiet! Don't tell anybody. Let's go. Come on, go. <laughs> Don't work in the dark, Stacy. You'll tire your eyes. Oh, thanks. Oh, hi, Mr. Conductor. When did it get so dark outside? When the rain clouds came. Oh, no. I hope it doesn't rain on the fireworks. We won! Stacy, we won the three like a race! Oh, that's great! Dan, tell me, what happened to the rabbit? Billy took him out in the woods somewhere and let him go. Good for Billy. We had an escape not long ago on the island of Sodor. You mean someone really escaped from the island of Sodor? No, escaped from diesel territory. I'll tell you the story. 
One day, Edward was talking to Trevor when Douglas steamed by. He was pulling a train of heavy coal cars. Come on, Edward. Stop gossiping in the sun when there is work to be done. Later, Edward spoke to Douglas. Trevor and I are old friends, and you and he have a lot in common, too. We do, quizzed Douglas. And what would that be? Scrap, said Edward quietly. Douglas gasped. Don't mention that word. It makes me wheels wobble. It does the same to Trevor, replied Edward. He was being sent to the scrapyard, but the vicar and I saved him, and now he's really useful again. Even so, Sir Topham Hatt certainly does need another steam engine here. Aye, he does, and quickly. That night, Douglas was still working. He had taken the midnight goods train to a station at a faraway part of the island where only the diesels work. He was just shunting, ready for his return journey, when... That sounds like a steam engine, he thought. The hiss came again. Who's there? asked Douglas. A whisper came. Are you Sir Topham Hatt's engine? I am proud of it. Well, I'm Oliver, and I'm with my brake van, Toad. We've run out of coal and have no more steam. But what are you doing? Escaping. From what? Scrap. Douglas shivered. Then, he remembered Edward's story about saving Trevor. I'll be glad to help you. It'll have to look, though, as if you're ready for scrap and I'm taking you away. Their drivers and firemen agreed to help, too. Everyone worked fast. No time to turn round. I'll run tender first. Come on. But before they could clear the station, they were stopped. Aha, uh -huh, called a foreman. A great western engine and a brake van, too. You can't take these. Hey, but they're all for us, said Douglas's driver. See for yourself. The foreman looked all over Oliver. Seems in order. Right away, guard. We've had worse, replied Oliver, and they forged ahead. It was daylight when their journey ended. We're home, cried Douglas. Shh, said his driver. There are the works. We'll find a place for Oliver. Oliver said goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. The next day, Douglas told the other engines all about Oliver. Sir Topham Hatt will have to know, said James. Douglas should tell him at once, added Gordon. Well, here he is, said a voice. Now, what's this all about? Beg pardon, sir, but we do need another engine. Yes, sir, ventured Gordon. A steam engine, sir. Well, unless one is saved from scrap, there's little hope. But, sir, one has. Yes, indeed. And thanks to you, Douglas, he is now at our works. Oliver is just what we need for Duck's branch line. Everyone cheered. Now, Oliver and Toad are mended and painted in full Great Western colors. Duck and Oliver are happy on their branch line. The others laughed at first and called it the Little Western. Duck and Oliver were delighted, and so the Little Western it will always be. What a close call for Oliver. That was really a scary story, Mr. Conductor. And especially with all that lightning outside. <sighs> Come on, everybody. We don't want to miss the fireworks. And don't forget your speech there, Stacy. Don't worry about the storm. I brought umbrellas. <laughs> Go. Yo!
wonder what they're up to. Magic dust. Now I can't disappear. This is serious. Where? Uh, down there. I vacuumed it up. Hey, hey, hey. Shh, shh, shh. Did you hear that? What? D -d 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 it sounded like little tiny footsteps or something. I'm telling you, there's somebody or something in here trying to get our gold. Yeah, we'll see about that. Come on out. Come on out. Where are you? What are you, a man or a mouse? Well, hopefully a mouse. Come on, come on, I know you're in here somewhere. Where the heck are you? Ah, there you are! Oh. All right, where are you? Come on, come on, where are you? Sounded worse than Rex's old pickup truck backfiring. It was a nickel's worth of fireworks. And that's our cue, Dee Dee. Hit it. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Now, you little rocket stealer. And I know that you're not a man. I know you're a mouse, so why don't you just come on out with your paws up? Huh? <laughs> what you doing, Uncle Skimmer? Ah, well, I'm just. I'm. Oh, it's a ghost. That's the thing about freedom. You don't realize it's there until it's gone. I must remember to take better care of it. Stacy, you are great! Oh, oh second that care of home, Miss Jones. It was wonderful, just wonderful. It was moving and touching and so forth. No, no, it was. <laughs> it really and truly was. And if it hadn't started to rain hmm, down on that whole crowd, everybody would have stayed and enjoyed it, too. Great idea, scaring me half to death. Gold dust, and you're invisible, then you're not invisible, then the rain comes and takes away the invisibility. Nonsense! Why are you two all dressed up? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, these are all our work clothes. And while you folks are out having fun, Schemey and I were in the station working. <clears throat> working at what? Uh... Capturing wild animals. You know, there are a lot of wild animals in the station that should be put in cages. <sighs> Well, Stacy, yeah. how are you going to end your Fourth of July speech anyway? Yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking about Abraham Lincoln this morning, and he said something that, well, to me, sums up Independence Day. He said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, and oh, of course, that means all women, too, were created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, 
that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We can't have a 4th of July without fireworks. Space Goof Summer with delicious food, exciting activities, and summer fun. Space Goofs, today at 2.30.